Imagine being in the middle of nowhere. No. No food, no, no. water, just you in the Arctic wilderness. Immediately Our next guest no. is laughing. I don't know why, because this is crazy. Immediately Take a look. No. I was out there for 73 days. My time in the Arctic was hands down the most powerful experience of my life. Here we go. <laughs> First bites of rabbit. Oh my goodness. Uh, oh, oh, she likes it. She doesn't like it. It's I don't know what that face. I'm trying it's to. Protein, animal, vegetable, mineral. What is happening here? It's rabbit. Oh. Okay. I'm Conejito. sorry. We are mesmerized. Conejito. Oh. See, Juanita Tebow was the first woman to win an alone solo survival challenge. And it's a survival show where brave participants brave. are forced to use their wits when left in the wilderness with nothing but a backpack. I hope there's wine in there. <laughs> Now Wonia is sharing her story in her new memoir called Never Alone, A Solo Arctic Survival, and she is joining us on the couch. Holy moly. Back here inside four walls and running water. <laughs> it's a little awkward, I have to say, but I, I would got you this. Yes. Would, you prepare, would you prefer to be back out in the wilderness? Pretty much, I would say, yeah. That's, that's my preference, but I spend a lot of time in four walls, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you grow up as, as an outdoorsy kid? You I know, I grew up hiking, well. but nothing like what I was doing out on alone. That was definitely something that I came to in my adult life. Where did you grow up? I grew up in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains in Northern California. Okay. So I had a lot of nature access. Sure. And very outdoorsy parents who were dragging me outside from the time I could lace up my hiking boots. There we go. My okay. gosh. That where, explains so much. Where is your backpack? <laughs> she has a small I, version. I left no. that at home, I did bring, but I will say that I do tend to have a pouch with like, you know, some basic necessities on me most of the time. No, I peeped the whole thing do, from the shoes. Should we do a what's in your bag? From the shoes. <laughs> we could do that. We'll do that in a, for, in a little bit. First of all, I have no manners this morning. No. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm just, yes. Neither of us would ever be able to A, compete or B, win. Part of, of the reason why I wrote the book is so that you could identify with my story and so that you would feel capable. Because That's I think outfit. all of us are more capable than we give ourselves credit for. Yeah. And I didn't know how much I was capable of until I was out there with it all on the line. So, so uh, how much did you learn about yourself along this process? I mean, an, an incredible amount. It wow. was absolutely amazing. Yeah, it was unlike anything I've ever experienced. Okay, so uh, Top Chef, you do me some place at home. <laughs> You're not gonna die. No. How do you prep for an experience like this. There are cameras rolling, some of them visible, some of them not visible. Actually, there are no, we, all we of do all invisible. of the filming. There's wow. no people out there There's filming. There's not a crew. No, no, you're really alone. You're literally alone. alone, and they drop you with a camera case with a bunch of cameras, and so you're literally filming the entire journey while also doing everything it takes to survive, which is a very huge part of the challenge that a lot of people don't recognize. Okay, you win. I know you won, but you like like you really win. <laughs> you win how life do you, as well. How do you prep? to do a show like this? You know, I think it really depends on where you're starting mm -hmm. from. For me, I felt pretty confident in my skills, and so mm. I put a lot of my energy towards making the clothing out of traditional materials. For, so like what I'm wearing, I'm, I made most of this. Oh my and gosh. so I was making my own fur parka, my own boots, my own wool jacket to go out there. So my prep looked like that. Some people, the prep looks like practicing the skills, and most of us are putting on weight. So a lot of the prep looks like stuffing ourselves. Carbo loading so and that protein. So we oh, carry right. whatever calories we can, because it's, it's pretty hard to procure calories out there in the environments they put us in on alone. 73 days? How mm -hmm. long were you? That's how... For that's... season six, oh yeah. And then I went out again in 50 days, so 123 total with the two seasons. Wow. That is, that is, that is unbelievable. Obviously a phys physically grueling challenge, yeah. but for me, I, it's the, the mental capacity and, and will and strength that you must have had or gotten. I mean, that's, that's a huge part of it, and I think that that's one of the things that people focus on the least. When you think about wilderness survival, people think about the skills and not the mental, emotional aspects, which... I think are hands down the most important thing, and they're what take most people out yes. on this particular challenge. Yeah. By the way, I love the title of this, Thank Never you. Alone, because yeah. it's a play on words. Where did this come from, Never Alone? Because were you talking to yourself? Were you talking to the birds? Who'd yeah. you make friends without that? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> the reality was that for me, my background is in environmental science okay. and natural history and botany, and so it felt like entering this greater community that I had never met before because I'd never been anywhere near the Arctic Circle. So 
it was about feeling connected to everything in the landscape around me in ways that I might have not have done had there been other humans around. Mm. You know, having no human companionship really pushes you to look for more connection with the greater landscape. So the animals, the birds were really powerful presences. I mean, the lake itself, it's this huge, mm. amazing lake. The rocks are some of the mo most ancient rocks on the planet. The There's literally the fossils of the oldest bacterial mats on the planet. So billions and billions of years of history spread right out there. on the land before What you. a humbling experience, too. Oh, <laughs> wow. No, I can't. Yeah. Now, hard left, uh, you, from the wilderness <laughs> to New York City. Right? A little birdie yeah. told us that this might be your first time in the Big Apple. I have never set foot in New York City before. Welcome. Well, thank, thank you, you for coming. I know it's not what you're used to. Welcome. I mean, if you want to go... It's, it's <laughs> the scary wilderness as yeah. far as I'm concerned. You, there can go, is, you can go pop a squat Central Park. No there's also, there is also likely uh, uh, some smooched on gum on 42nd Street that's been there probably as long as some of those rocks that you saw. And the bacterial... Uh, in the water. probably more bacterial life here. What than are there. you going to do in New York while you're here? I went to the Empire State Building okay. yesterday. Well Good. done. Big and one. I'm going to be on the moth at Greenwood Cemetery. So I'm super, super excited. You have okay. arrived. Right. Well, the moth. Just do it at you. The Natural History Museum, okay. I hear, is very important. There is a new exhibit. Oh. There is a new exhibit. It is a good it's one. gorgeous. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to Broadway, going to a play. Of course. Day after mm -hmm. Tony's. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. pretty of exciting. Course. So, what, what do you want folks to take away from this, from this book? You know, the reason I wrote that book was to shake up our ideas of wilderness survival because mm. usually we see it as untenable for the average person. Like you have to be Rambo, you know, going out there to wrestle the wilderness into submission. And that's, that's really intimidating. And so I wrote this to show that someone like myself, a small woman, going at it from a place of connection rather than a place of dominance is a more successful strategy and also that people could identify themselves yeah. in the story and feel like they too are capable of things beyond what they had ever imagined. Well, okay. this sounds like a metaphor for life sure. as Absolutely. well. And uh, you know, while you're saying this, I, one of the things I always tell myself, the, the body achieves what the mind believes. That's right. And that uh, to me feels like just this. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so Thanks much. for making us one of your stops. Thank you yeah, for being here. My Thank pleasure. you for, for writing this me. book. And you can grab a copy oh, yeah. of her book, Never Alone, A Solo Arctic Survival. It's coming out tomorrow.